In this video, we're told we've got a number n, and what we have to do is look for certain factors and multiples of n that also happen to be square numbers or cube numbers. Now, we're not actually given what n is exactly in terms of having all its digits, but we are given n as a product of prime factors. Now, there's no point trying to work out exactly what that comes out to, because if you stick these into your calculator, you'll find it's got too many digits to show up in full. So we need to work with n as this product of prime factors. Now, to answer the first question, what is the greatest factor of n that is also a square number? We need to understand something about square numbers. Let me give you a few examples. 49 is a square number, 144 is a square number, and so is 900. They're just a few examples. Now, 49 is 7 squared, which means 7 times 7. 144 is 12 squared, which means 12 times 12. And 900 is 30 squared, which is 30 times 30. The whole point with square numbers is that they can be written as a whole number multiplied by itself. Now, let's look at the prime factorizations of these square numbers. 49 is just 7 to the power of 2. For 144, what I can do is rewrite the 12 as 2 times 2 times 3. So that's the first 12, and I'm going to multiply it by the other 12, which is also 2 times 2 times 3. And altogether, that gives me 144 as 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2. If you look here, we've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, also multiplied by 3, multiplied by 3 again. Remember, the order of multiplying doesn't really matter, so we can multiply all the 2s together first to get 2 to the power of 4, and then multiply by those 3s to get 3 to the power of 2. Finally, we could do something similar with the 30 times 30 for 900. 30 is the same as 2 times 3 times 5. So multiplying that 30 by another 30 is the same as multiplying by 2 times 3 times 5 again. And we get 900 as equal to 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 2. If I just take one more example, 64 is 8 times 8. Now 8 itself is 2 to the power of 3. So when we multiply those together, we end up with 2 to the power of 6. The important point I want to highlight is that the indices of all of these prime factors are even numbers. So when you've got a square number and you write it as a product of prime factors, you end up with even indices. That's because whatever you've got in the prime factorization of just the square root, you end up having that again. So you effectively have to double whatever indices you've got. So in the case of 64, you've got 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 3. 3 is an odd number. So the index is odd, but when you multiply them together, what you end up having is 2 times 2 times 2 multiplied by the other 2 times 2 times 2, which means you've got twice as many. So we end up with an even number, in this case, 6. We're going to use this fact to help us answer the questions that we've now got. So the greatest factor of n that is also a square number it needs to have only even indices and none of the indices can exceed what we've got for these prime factors as they stand. So the greatest factor of n that will also be a square number will be 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 6 times 13 to the power of 6. Remember, I have to have only these prime factors and the indices have to be even 
and I want them to be as large as possible to give me the greatest factor possible. So I can have the four. I can't have seven because it's odd, but the greatest even number that's less than seven is six. And I can have the six here for my 13. Part B is similar, except we're now looking for a cube number. Now, I won't go into the full explanation like I did for square numbers, but if you think it through, you should realise that if you have a cube number, each of the indices should actually be a multiple of three. So what we're looking for here are indices that are multiples of three that do not exceed these indices that we've got for our prime factorization of n. And because we're looking for the greatest such factor, we want those indices to be as large as possible. So that's going to give us an answer of 2 to the power of 3. That's the greatest multiple of 3 that doesn't exceed 4. So 2 to the power of 3, we need to multiply that by 3 to the power of 6. 6 is the greatest multiple of 3 that doesn't exceed 7. And then we're going to multiply that by 13 to the power of 6. Again, 6 is the greatest multiple of 3 that doesn't exceed 6 there. Now, we're on to multiples. We want the lowest multiple of n that is also a square number. Now, multiples of n have to contain all of these prime factors. If we want a square number, we need indices that are all even, and those indices cannot be less than what we've got here. So the lowest multiple of n that's also a square number will be 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 8 times 13 to the power of 6. I need indices that are all even. Yes, I've got that. But they can't be less than what we've got here. Finally, the lowest multiple of n that is also a cube number. Remember, for a cube number, what we want are indices that are multiples of three. And this time we don't want any of these indices to be less than the indices we've got in n. So we need two to the power of six. That's the lowest multiple of three. That is at least four. Multiplied by three to the power of nine. Nine is the lowest multiple of three that is at least 7, multiplied by 13 to the power of 6. 6 is the lowest multiple of 3 that is at least 6. Just as a little extra, I'm going to go back and look at how many times this factor of n actually goes into it. And what you should see is that this goes into n exactly three times. Because if you think about it, if you multiply this by 3, we're going to have 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 to the power of 6 multiplied by another 3, and that would turn this into 3 to the power of 7. And then we'd still multiply by 13 to the power of 6. So multiplying this by 3 gives us n, which means this goes into n three times. And therefore, this is a factor of n. And we know it's a square number because, remember, all of these indices are even. Similarly, this number here goes into n exactly six times. I can see that because we need to multiply this by a 2 to turn this into 2 to the power of 4, and this by 3 to turn this into 3 to the power of 7 and we don't need to do anything with the 13s. So multiplying this by a 2 and a 3 gets you to n. So in other words, multiplying this by 6 gets you to n, which means this goes into n six times. Looking at our answer to c, this is a multiple of n. So let's think about how many lots of n this actually is. Well, n is 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 7 times 13 to the power of 6. The only difference is that this number has a 3 to the power of 8 in it. So what we've really done is taken 3 lots of n 
to get ourselves to a position where we've got all even indices. So this number here is actually three times n. Finally, you might like to work out how many lots of n this is worth. Remember, it is a multiple of n, so it must be some whole number multiplied by n. What is that whole number? Pause the video and have a quick go for yourself. Hopefully you found that the answer is 36. This is 36 lots of n or 36 times n. How do I know this? Well, I can rewrite the answer in this format. Two to the power of six is the same as two to the power of four multiplied by two multiplied by two again. So if you think about what that means, it's two to the power of four, that's two times two times two times two, multiplied by two multiplied by two gives me two to the power of six. I'm going to write three to the power of nine as three to the power of seven multiplied by three multiplied by three. And then I'm going to have the 13 to the power of six. So why is this helpful? Well, if I write these multiplications out in a different order, you'll see that I've got two times two times three times three multiplied by two to the power of four multiplied by three to the power of seven multiplied by 13 to the power of six. So let me just highlight the bits I've grouped together. I've grouped the two times two there and the three times three there to get this lot. And what I'm left with is two to the power of four times three to the power of seven times 13 to the power of six, which is all of this. And that is just n. So what I've shown is that the answer that we got for part D is the same as two times two times three times three times n. And this green bit here is 36. That's how I know that this is 36 lots of n. Just to be clear, all of this stuff that I've shown you in green is a bit extra. We didn't actually need to do any of this to answer the questions. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of extra information about those answers and try to help you to see how these factors and multiples are related to the original number n.